Clay TV. We're getting towards the end of the year and I always think of celebrations and when I think of celebrations for some reason I think of disco balls. I don't know why but I thought well let me make a really cute celebration type of necklace that's not a disco ball but has that feel of a disco ball. So this is what I came up with and it's, I think it's really cute and it's really easy to do and it can be worn with something dressy or something casual whatever you want and you can make it your own in any which way you want there this here is basically a half of a dome and I'll show you how I make that and I strung it up on this wire which I'll show you in a little bit so what you're gonna need is you're gonna need some silver clay you can also use the graphite pearl to get a really good effect with it too. That's what I used on this one. I did use the graphite pearl. However, I'm going to use silver with this. I wanted a different look for this as well. So, you know, you can change up the colors, whatever you want to do. It's totally up to you. You're going to need your normal tool, like a like a acrylic rod, a blade, and I'm using the etch and pearl today. This is one of the etch and pearls they come in a set of three and i have one of our square plunger cutters and they come i believe in a set of three as well and this is one of the smaller ones and it works really well to make it easy to create squares on our disco necklace <laughs> or or our bling necklace and i have one of the graduated cutters that we sell they come in um a kit of 11 different sizes so that's that and I have a tile because that makes it easier for me to cut out the little pieces and pick them up easier. I have a piece of silver leaf which we're going to use to make it to make the bling and I have a flat well a flat needle nose plier and one jump ring that's twisted because I really like the look of that. And that's pretty much it you don't need a whole lot for this project. The first thing to get started is you want to condition your clay and I've rolled this out to the fourth thickest setting of my pasta machine. Now, this is for the silver leaf. I don't want that to be very thick. I want the silver leaf part to be thin. But when we roll out the piece for our actual pendant, it's going to be on the number one thickness. But I'll share that with you when we get there. So you want to have fans turned off if you're working in a room that has a lot of fans because this can fly away so what we're going to do is after we've conditioned the clay and rolled it out to the third thickest setting of our pasta machine we're going to lay the clay right on our silver leaf and then you just want to get rid of the rest and i like to try to keep it in the book that i'm because they come in a book the the leaf and it just makes it easier if you can keep it in the book then you'll have it ready for next time so and if not, don't worry about it. There's no rule here with this stuff. It does get a little messy, and if it gets on your work sur surface, it may stick. So just be, be aware of that. So let me just kind of get this and put this on the tile, and I'll move this out of the way so it's not all over the place. Actually, I'll put it right there. So let me set this aside. It wants to blow every which way. <laughs> it's going everywhere, guys. Sorry about that. As you can see here, it wants to stick to my work surface like I mentioned. But you can just you can just uh, spray something on your work surface and get it up real easy. So I have that now. And, you know, you could keep it like this. There are all different things you can do to this. There, you could drop alcohol ink on top of the leaf to get a different look. But I'm going just for the, for the silver look. So I'm not going to do that for this project. Sorry, guys. I just want the, the silvery, glittery look. So, at this point, I'm going to add it onto my tile. It just makes it easier for me to cut it. And I'm just going to go and cut a bunch of these squares out. And I won't bore you with them. I'll cut, I'll cut a few out, and then I'll cut it off camera. But you want to try to use up, you know, you want to get close to, to it. And just save on your, your leaf, you know. Cut as close as you can as to the next one. And just start making your little squares, and I'll show you them in a second. Until you have, I think I, I needed like a little over 30 to, to make this disco ball pendant. So, and you can see it goes really fast. So here's what they look like. 
really cool and nice and shimmery and uh, so let me go ahead and get these all cut out and I'll be back to to move on to the next step so I have my little tiles cut up that I used the little plunger square cutter with and so I can set those aside for right now we're going to work on the base part and so I've conditioned and run this clay through my pasta machine at the third thickest at the excuse me at the thickest setting on my pasta machine so I'm just going to use which is actually the number one setting on my pasta machine which is the thickest but I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm going to start to bring it around the bowl and these bowls are also available in the shop at createalong.com the plunger cutters are there the graduated cutters are there so you can find them real easy so after I mold it around the bowl I can tear off any extras I just use my fingers and tear it off you're not looking for perfection right here this is not this is not going to be even on there <laughs> so then I'm going to come back with my cookie cutter and I'm going to just place it in the center like so and then I'm going to cut down and twist a little and then I'm going to pull the rest off and so now I've got a nice half round there to work with and I started in the middle of this when I placed my my little blings on so we're gonna, I'm going to do that. It seemed to work out really well. So I just started right in the middle and started placing them on there. And you want to try and space them a little bit. Now, I mean, there shouldn't be a huge gap in between them, but space them a little. That's what I did. I like the look of it. Of course, if, if you prefer them to be closer, I mean, that's totally up to you. Do what you like. But this is how I did it. So now when I come to the end here, I don't want to drape it around the, the edge. So that's when I come in with my blade and kind of cut it right at the edge of the pendant there. So when I go across, it'll still look like it's all, you know, it's, it's all the way across and not cut off. So just continue all the way to the other side. And you want to try to line these up really, you know, as good as you can. And once again here, we're going to find a little sticking over the edge. And we're just going to cut that extra off. And then you want to just continue on. Let's see. If it looks like it got out of line, if the line's a little crooked, you can always adjust. I want to try to keep it so it's not crooked. You know, sometimes when, when I'm working upside down like this, it's a little hard. But you get the gist of it. So let's keep going. And so get, once again, I'm going to start here in the middle. And go all the way across to the side and it looks like we're gonna need another little piece right here so we just place it and cut off the extra and I, do, I don't know I thought this was so fun to do but you can certainly do it you know it doesn't have to be for New Year's <laughs> But with New Year's coming, I thought, well, what a fun way to make a necklace, you know, that's festive and and not too hard to make. And you can even make some gifts. They're so they, they go pretty fast. You can even make some gifts. You, you could add words on to these. I thought about all the different things, you know, we talk, I talked about adding some of the the uh, alcohol inks to change the color of the leaf. So that's always a possibility, but you could add little crystals going in between here. You could add words on here. Really, the sky is the limit, and that's what I like about things. I like about creating. I like, you know, that you can change it up and get a totally different look. And so you don't always have to do the same thing. You know, you can just make it your own by just tweaking it a little, you know. So here I am at the end. And so that's really it. You, at the end, when you come to the edge or whatever, you just want to cut it so that it's circular, so it so it goes along with the 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 um, shape of the pendant. And so I like to do my bigger areas first, and then I'll work on you know the the tip part, which is over here. I'll come back to that. 
it just goes a lot faster if you do it this way i see you know i mean it you would to look at this pendant because it has a lot of these little tiles it looks like it takes a long time but as you can see it's going pretty fast it's not a super time consuming project you can do it probably in under a half an hour from start to finish which is nice and so, once again, just continuing on here, trying to keep it in line. Now, once I get all these on here, you have other options as well. You could paint in between the, the spaces a powdered pigment or, you know, put some kind of ink. That's totally up to you as well, but that's another way to change up the look of this. You know, a, a powdered pigment to, on the back. As a back color, I wouldn't paint, paint the powdered pigment on until you get all your tiles on because powdered pigments have, have once you put them on the clay, they have a tendency to stop the clay from sticking to it. So you don't want to put powdered pigments on if you're going to be adding any kind of tiles or anything like that until after you've added your tiles. So once we're done with these, then you could go back and put the powdered pigments. You know, you, like I said, it will stop it from sticking. So that's something you have to consider because you want these to stick on to the clay. And we're almost there. We're almost finished. That's how fast it goes. You know, you can see here, it's not, it, it's not real time consuming, but definitely try to use the right side of the blade <laughs> like me who just used the wrong one. And so we just have a little at the top to go and and then we'll add the hole and uh, then it's ready to bake. So let's get this done. And actually this could probably come over here because it's about the size I'm going to need anyways. But just I'm still going to cut, you know, with the contour of the, the circle. And I think one more should top it off. Okay. So then you want to give everything a little gentle push so that it's, you make sure that it's adhering to the clay and clean up any extra pieces that might have fallen. You don't need those. And then on the edge here, you may want to take your finger and oops, gently, don't do what I just did. Gently take your finger <laughs> and uh, smooth it out, you know, get any extra pieces off. And so let's now add our hole to hang it. And you don't need too big because it's a small jump ring. As you can see, it's not a major jump ring here. So you just choose which side you want to hang it on. I think I'm going to go over here. And I look for the middle area. And then just use my etch and pearl to open it up. And now it's ready to go in the oven. And that's as simple as it is. And when it comes out of the oven, let me just open this up so you can see. I used a twisted jump ring and I like the look of the twisted jump rings. If you've never used them, they're really, they're not, they're, they're a nice addition. Um, sometimes it's hard to see where the end of them is, but here we go. So you just insert your jump ring. It's like so. And then I put my, my necklace wire on. And with jump rings, you close them side to side. You never pull them apart. You always go side to side. And so when you close it, now your necklace is finished. It's that, it's that easy. And I bake this up for about 25 minutes, 25, 30 minutes at 275 because it's the Primo brand. And when it comes out, all you have to do is pop it right off of the metal form. It comes right off super, super easy. And there you have it. A really cute New Year's Eve fun and festive necklace. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me and have a very happy New Year.